All right, good morning. Thank you for being at Virtual Church with us. We are so happy to have you with us. It's good to be a community together, even if it's just through the ethers, you know? It's very interesting. In our Science of Mind philosophy, we teach how all minds are connected. So even though you're out there in the land of virtualness, and there are a few of us here, just a few in the sanctuary, to make the service happen, the important thing to remember is that we are all always, always connected on the unseen side of life. I'm gonna to talk today a little bit about what I think of as our authentic voice. Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of our church, um, created this teaching here in Southern California, which I think is really interesting uh, because he really felt that this philosophy was very agreeable to people who had a very strong creative impulse in life. And I think it's why he loved Southern California, because he was connected with people who were, you know, actors and actresses and singers and directors, and he knew lots of Hollywood people, and he loved how Hollywood people could take this philosophy and incorporate it to move their life forward in a greater way that expressed the infinite spirit uh, much more than they had known before. Um, our teaching, I think, um, allows each of us to access the presence of spirit that's within and reveal it in our own unique way. You know, for thousands and thousands of years, I mean, go back to the ancient Greeks. They knew that our, our, our individual creativity and our spirituality were connected. And people have known that for years, right? That creativity, I think, the creativity that you and I express I believe is an aspect of the spirit that we are. I think everyone, everyone is here to create. And you say, well, here to create? Create what? Well, I don't know. For you, it could be you're here to create a life that you love. It could be you're here to create a wonderful home or a beautiful family. Or um, you could be writing, you know, a great novel or... Um, you could just be working on creating a healthy body. You know, the universe doesn't judge any of that. Spirit that we are, I believe, is the vessel through which we are always in the process of creating. We're all endowed with free will. We're all endowed with choice. So if you want to sit back and say, I'm not creative, I don't create, the universe will say, okay, interesting choice, that's just fine. But I believe that what's always taking place is that spirit, the infinite mind, God, is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself through us, by means of us. God creates by us saying yes to the creative impulses that come forward in our mind and in our heart. So um, the universe, I think, is always, always responding to, to our thoughts. The universe is responding to our words. The universe is responding to our deeds. The universe is responding to our intention. So, um, and, and what, what I mean by the universe is responding is that it is giving back to us in equal measure what we give out. Right, so, so there is what we create intentionally, but there is also things that we create mm, unintentionally. And the universe is responding to all of that. Now, everything we do has an effect. We know this. This is the teaching of the science of mind, that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So in science of mind, as we wake up, as our consciousness wakes up, as we start to grow and unfold and evolve, as we become more conscious and more aware, uh, more aware of what? That we are connected to something greater. God uh, is obviously what we're connected to. The more conscious we become, the more aware we are of what it is we are choosing to create. See, it makes sense, doesn't it? As we wake up more, as our consciousness expands, we become more aware of what we're trying to create, of where we're trying to maybe put our mark in the world or make the world a, a better place. As we grow, as we expand, as we move up in consciousness, you know, the view, the view changes. I remember when, when I was a kid and I was in Scouts, they would always tell us, now look, if you're lost, then you have to get to a hill because on a hill, you have a better chance of getting a better view. If you can't get to a hill, then the best thing to do is to climb a tree. 
and find out where you are. Get reoriented and then you can move forward, right? So as we go higher in consciousness, I think that we'll be awed by, by creation, by our creation, by other people's creation. We'll see that this is something holy. And what I mean by holy is that the infinite mind, God, was seeking to express this by means of me, by means of you, by means of this other person. So there's a saying that I like, and I believe that this is spiritual truth, and it's this, that beauty is what God's love looks like. Beauty is what God's love looks like. Isn't that beautiful? I did not make that up. Um, so that's beauty in any form. And people will say, well, you know, I'm just not that creative a person. Well, I don't care if what you do is you want to decorate a cake or you're going to arrange a vase of flowers or you're going to make some pretty greeting card or you're going to do a collage or you're going to write a novel. It really is the, the form that comes to you is uniquely personal, I believe, to, to each and every one of us. I think we want to own everything that we create, right? We want to be responsible, conscious people and say, yes, that was my intention. Yes, I created that. Yes, I created that. Of course, I know how it works. If we have a mess in our life, we think, I did not create that mess. Other people created that mess. That had nothing to do with me. They just spilled over onto my side of the fence. Well, the truth is, if there's a mess that we are feeling the effects of, we had something to do with creating that. So, so it's just this simple, that we can create darkness or we can create light. Doesn't that make sense? I can create good in the world or I can create not so good in the world. I can create love in the world or I can put more fear into the world. And I think we do all of it. At some point on our journey, we do all of it. You know, I think we've all compromised at some time. So I want to say something that is not usually what I talk about, but I was thinking about it like this, and it's that I want to talk a little bit about our fifth chakra. So the fifth chakra is here. It's your throat. It's the energy center in your throat, and it's the chakra of communication, and it's the power of choice. So think about where this is located. Your throat chakra, the center you know, for communication and the power of choice, is located between your head and your heart. Okay, well, that can't be a coincidence, right? You know, between the head and the heart. When, your head, when our head and our heart are not together, we're going to get stuck. We're going to experience some form of conflict. So in a spiritual life, we look at why do I make the choices I make? Because clearly, at any given moment, the choice we make we think is the best thing we could possibly do in that moment, right? But in a spiritual life, one of the things we have to ask is why do I make the choices I make? What am I creating in every area of my life? Because in each area, I am involved. Do not kid yourself and think, no, 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 not me. Yes, we are involved. Our consciousness, I mean, our thinking, our heart and mind is involved in every area of our life, whether it's our family or our work or our health or our abundance, and certainly, certainly our creative expression. Everyone has different gifts to express, so comparison is out. It's completely off the table, no comparison, right? Uh, you know, uh, and, and because if you compare, it's only gonna make you feel bad, so just don't do it. You know, a few years back, I used to teach um, uh, kindergarten through fourth grade. I was, I was doing yoga, and I, I really resonated with the littlest kids, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, uh, because we all had the same sense of humor, to tell you the truth. And, um, and I would say to these little kids, I'd say, okay, who can stand on one leg? And everybody would raise their hand and say, well, who can hop up and down in a circle? Oh my God, they could do that. Who could tell me a story? Oh, they can do that. Who um, can make a funny, funny face? Oh my God, everybody could do that. Who can make a scary, everybody could. Who could draw me a picture? Oh, everybody could do that. You know, the thing I love when, when you're working with kids that are so little is that they still have this incredible faith and belief in themselves. They have not learned they're not, quote, good at something yet. So, you know, of course I can tell a story. Of course I can make a funny face. Of course I can hop on one foot in a circle, you know? And so they're, they're, they're not comparing themselves. They're not thinking, well, you know, Michael Jordan is really a much better athlete than me, so I probably shouldn't even try. They're not doing that, you know? That it's like every single one of them in the class is unique and special and fantastically beautiful. It's just true. It's just true. And I think it's such a shame that somehow along our spiritual journey, we tend to lose that, right? We're all 
always creating, you know, often with our voice, you know? So, so when we speak to each other, when we say something out into the world, I think it's valuable to think of, gee, what is my intention in what I say? What's the tone of voice that I'm using? What's the attitude I'm using? Because you know, everything we do carries the energy or everything we do carries the consciousness with which we do it, right? So, so, so your intention, your attitude is very, very important, I think. You know, we create the, the energy field or sort of like the frequency around us because all of life is vibrating. We know now, you know, in 2020, we know that everything is energy, which is a very similar way of saying everything is God because that's what we believe in the science of mind, that it's all God. So this is why everything we do matters, because our relationship to the power of creation is, is a very, very intimate one. Having had time to think about this this week, I realized that community is a component of this that is enormously important, because a group of like-minded people, like we have when we're doing church, a group of like-minded people helps us stay more on track, helps support us, helps love us. It, it, it'll, a group of like-minded people lets us just be us when we need that the most. You know, people around me who know how to support the activity of spirit within me become like a great blessing in my life. You know, because without, without this kind of support system, like the support system that we have in church, we, we will move, um, I think we will more easily believe the bad stuff about ourselves. Without the support of a community, we'll believe the limitation, we'll believe in the lack. You know, all, all the reasons why we can't do something. This is why having a community of like-minded people around us is so important. You know, what do you tell yourself will happen if you are fully creatively expressed? You know, as expressed as you want to be, as outrageously expressed as you want to be. Do you even allow yourself to think of that? Maybe you say to yourself, oh, no, I can't think of that. I'm going to be a failure, or I'll just be disappointed, so it's better not to even get my hopes up. This week, my encouragement to you is to get still at some point for a few minutes and ask yourself, what is longing to be expressed through me? What is it that spirit is seeking to express by means of me. Now, all you have to do is just be with that question this week. What is it that spirit is seeking to express through me? Or what is longing to be expressed by means of me? You know, it may be something different from what you've ever done before. In which case, I would say, well, don't be shocked by that. Because if you hear the voice of God, you're supposed to listen to that. Now, Ernest Holmes says that our intuition, when we have a hunch or an inkling or an aha, you know, when we hear that inner voice, that voice of God, he, that's our intuition. And that's how spirit speaks to us, through the voice of intuition. So I think we have to trust. Trust what? Well, trust that what we need to know will always, always be revealed. Now, probably not the whole path, you know, perhaps just the next couple of steps, but I believe what is authentically you is of God, is of spirit. And this is why, like when I say a writer has to find their voice, we have to find our voice. We have to find our way that we open up and allow infinite loving spirit to express through us in a way that only makes us more. In fact, it also makes the world a better place because imagine if everybody was fully creatively expressed. Now, God is infinite. There's room for everybody to do their creative expression, right? But imagine how happy people would be if we all were fully creatively expressed and we also all valued each other's creative expression. So um, in the Gospel of Thomas, it says, if you bring forth what is within you, it will save you. But if you don't bring forth what is within you, it will destroy you. So what stops us, I would say most often, it's fear. You know, there's a battle between our human personality that wants to and the fear that is terrified to, that stops us. So do we want to watch others express just so we can be safe? No, of course not. 
When we see other people expressing in a fantastic way, what that's supposed to do is light a fire under us. It's supposed to show us, gee, that's possible for me. I could do that as well. We cannot let the fear win, you know? So what do we do with it? Well, here, it's actually quite simple, I think. Feel the fear, acknowledge it. Yes, there is fear there. Now, don't claim the fear is yours. Don't say, oh, my fear is so big. No, there's just fear. It's just an energy, and you know what? That energy will change. So it's all right, feel the fear and do it anyway. Just do it anyway. You've acknowledged it, but you're not gonna give it power, and you're gonna do what you're inspired to do anyway. See, there's unfulfilled potential in everyone. Even if you are the most creatively expressed person, God could express even more by means of you. So Emerson said, what we have to do is get our bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. So what do I do or want to do, maybe just for the joy of it? What do I want to create just because I want to? Do that. That is spirit expressing. And you know, when we say yes to that, what happens is spirit lines up right behind us to express something else, and then the next thing, and then the next thing. So the question for this week is, what is longing to be expressed through me? What is longing to be expressed through me? And I'm going to pick this up and work with this a little more next week, so I really want you to think about that and answer that question this week. Just be present to that. Be real. Surrender all your thoughts around it. You know, stay in the present moment. Don't go too far in the future or too far in the past. See, because the presence of the living spirit within us is always seeking to fulfill us. Not to control, but to fulfill. So remember, the question this week is, what is longing to be expressed through me? Let's pray. We turn our attention inward now for a moment, knowing that each of us is an emanation of God, of God consciousness, of God love, of God light, of God's infinite creative spirit. And that we are creative beings. We are all here to create in our own unique, special way. So I claim for each and every one of us that we listen to that divine impulse, that intuition within, that we follow it, that we're not here to criticize ourselves or anyone else's creativity. We are just here to express that spirit of God that's within us that is uniquely trying to be us in a way like no one else. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends and parents and children, everyone we hold near and dear, and we remember that right where they are, God is present, that they are surrounded with God's love and intelligence, that perfect healing is taking place for them. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So we think of all those situations outside of ourselves that pull at our attention, and we remind ourselves that infinite loving spirit is there, that with God, all things are possible, and good is unfolding, even if it doesn't look too good right now. I claim for each and every one of us that we are healed, we are whole, we are loved, we are lovable. This is the truth as God created it. And so we bless our church and all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. Because we are all connected, we are all one on the unseen side of life. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is, together we all say, Amen.